Hello, my name is Steve Moore. I'm one of the volunteer guides at the International Bomb Command Centre. Today I'd like to tell you about MI9. Uh, now, MI9 was a, an outfit that was created during the Second World War to help uh, British servicemen either uh, avoid capture uh, during the Second World War or uh, escape if they had been taken prisoners of war. Now, why was that important? Well, if we look purely at Bomber Command, if you could get a pilot back to, to his unit, that saved an awful lot of training overheads, uh, perhaps up to two years to train a pilot, and then, of course, you've got the navigators, bomb aimers, etc., etc. And also, obviously, if man people did manage to escape from the prisons of war camp uh, and make a home run, as it was called, back to the UK, then that was quite uh, a morale boost for the, the other prisons of war. So MI9 was created and what they used to do, they used to interrogate our prisoners of war when they came back to try and glean as much information from them as possible. As an example, Airy Neve, uh, who was uh, later an MP, he escaped from Colditz and when he got back he was interrogated and he mentioned that he was almost caught because he was sat in a cafe and he broke open a bar of chocolate. Now chocolate was really difficult to come by in Germany. So people were looking around at him thinking, where'd you get your chocolate from? So he had to make a hasty retreat from the restaurant. So it was little nuggets like that that went into what was called the um, bulletin, the MI9 bulletin. And these were sent out to things like station intelligence officers so they could brief the crews on the latest information on escape and evasion, perhaps which towns to avoid, which railway stations had lots of German troops in them and etc. Uh, and that was always updated. And when they were interrogating our um, prisoners of war, they said, well, what is it you actually need? What was the most important things you needed? And they came up with three things. One was food, one was maps, and one was compasses. As far as food was concerned, especially in Bomber Command, the crews used to carry their own little personal ration pack. And that would contain things like uh, malted milk tablets, uh, boiled sweets, toffees, fire lighting equipment, uh, water purifying tablets, fishing uh, gear, etc. And it's not dissimilar to what the aircrew carry nowadays in the, in the RAF. This is actually one of the packs that we used to carry during uh, the Gulf War. And if I read on here, it's got uh, uh, water pur purifying tablets, it's got a fire making kit, etc, uh, etc. Et so very, very similar. Um, as far as maps are concerned, they used to carry silk maps. Um, why did we use silk? Well, silk's very durable. Uh, it's very hard to, uh, to destroy. Um, in fact, the Mary Rose, which was brought up from, the, uh, from Portsmouth, uh, it had been on the seabed for 400 years. When it was brought up, they still found remnants of silk that had survived. And of course, if it gets wet, it doesn't fall apart like a paper mat would. And it's quite quiet when you're trying to read it, perhaps in an escape and evasion uh, situation. Some of the maps were, uh, were smaller, these little handkerchief maps as they were called. And of course these could be very easily hidden in a, in a flying suit or in a, a tunic um, and used uh, when, uh, when you bailed out. Um, the other thing we needed was compasses. If you've got a map you need a compass. So some of the compasses they used to carry, this is one of the compasses they used to carry. This was a, an RAF tunic button compass. So that was the button there and this actually unscrewed and hidden inside a compartment was a, a little a little compass. Now the problem was the Germans discovered this. Um, so when the, the guys were taking prisoners of war they would check the, the tunic buttons to see if there's any compasses hidden in them. So they had to actually reverse the, the thread on these uh, tunic buttons. So when the Germans were actually trying to unscrew them they were actually tightening them up. So it was always a bit of a cat and mouse game. Um, another type of compass they had was this compass here. This is a fly button compass. So the guys would take off two buttons off their trouser fly. The bottom button had a little spriggit on it and the, the top button, which was magnetised, would sit on that and spin round and it had a little indicator on there to indicate which way was, uh, was north. So that's the fly button compass. And then another type of compass that was used on the uniform was the buckle compass. So this would be on the battle dress. They would take the, uh, take the buckle off. There'd be a, a little compartment here which would slide back. And again, a little uh, spriggit would come up 
and on top of that they would place a little magnetised uh, needle which would then again would indicate which way was north. So those were all on the uniforms. Of course the problem was when they were taken prisoners of war then they were obviously searched and a lot of this uh, um, items were, were confiscated. So how did they go on then? Well MI9 actually created um, created some um, bogus charities so that they, they would not use Red Cross parcels to sneak in items. Uh, that was a no-no. They were worried about compromising the Red Cross parcels. So these bogus charities were created and they would send items in. Uh, one such item they'd send in was what just looks like a normal handkerchief. This was actually what was called a developing handkerchief. And what, uh, what they had to do, this was actually a map but the way you had to get the map to reveal itself was treat it with chemicals. The problem was what chemicals did they have available in prisoners war camp? Well, the one that was readily, readily available was urine. Um, so the guys used to have to wee on these handkerchiefs and it would actually then reveal a map. Um, they did get more sophisticated. Uh, later on, they used to actually send chemicals in as well and, and the imaging was a lot better then. Um, Another way they used to get items in, Waddington's uh, Leeds, which produced things like Monopoly boards, um, they actually sneaked items in, in Monopoly boards. They could sneak in maps, compasses, and they even put money in there, German money and French uh, money, etc. So the prisoners of war had, uh, had currency to try and escape with. And of course, Waddington's also produced playing cards. So what they used to do, they used to send these playing cards in, but there were special playing cards because sandwiched in the middle of these playing cards was a section of a map. So the guys would soak the cards, take the, the pit part of the, uh, the card off and inside would be a map and then it was a bit of a jigsaw to, to put the map together. But it's another way of getting items in. Um, as far as compasses were concerned, one way of getting a compass in Obviously all prisoners of war want to look very, very smart, so they'd send in razor blades. This one's called Cheerio, which I think is quite good when you find out what it's actually used for. Um, the razor blade itself was magnetised and it could be placed in the surface film of a glass of water or on a, a puddle and it would spin round and indicate north. So it was another escape aid, if you like. And finally, even things like the Humble Pencil could be used as an escape aid. Um, the Cumberland Pencil Company in Keswick were commissioned to create a, a secret pencil. Uh, and this was only known by certain people who worked in the, the factory at night when all the rest of the workers had gone home. And what they did in the centre of the pencil, they put in a little tissue map. Now this was mulberry leaf tissue. Uh, it's not normal tissue. Again, if it gets wet, it can be wrung out and it doesn't disintegrate. And on there would be uh, printed a, a map. And in the little ferrule of the, of the pencil would be a compass. So you'd have to break these open and obviously get those items out. And the HB number on the pencil would indicate the type of map that was in here, whether it was a map of Germany, France, Italy, etc. So that's some of the items that they sent into the prisoners of war camp to help uh, the bomber crews, etc., get back and, and save all those training costs. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed that. Please come and visit the Bomber Command Centre when we reopen. All the guides would love to show you around. Bye for now.